Welcome back to Cat from Scratch, uh, episode seven, I believe. The topic today is triangulation. So, what is triangulation? Um, I'll talk about that. Talk about why we want to use triangulation. Um, what's the algorithm we're going to use? And then we're going to get right into the code. So that's the plan today. What is triangulation? It's pretty simple. You should already know this, to be honest. Um, triangulation is the process by which you can construct a set of triangles from any given planar polygonal face. So this is an example of a pentagon being reduced into three smaller triangles. So I think in general you can reduce any polygon to n minus two triangles, n being the number of vertices. I think that's 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 the case. I might be wrong. A any simple polygon for sure, any one that doesn't self-intersect or have holes in it for sure. Um, now we're not going to deal with anything else. Like we're not going to deal with triangles that self or polygons that self intersect or polygons that have holes in them. That's not too important for our purposes, but there there do exist uh, algorithms to, to do that, and they're not too not too far off what we're doing today. I will say though, we're going to do three D triangulation with this algorithm, which um, we're going to use an, an ear clipping algorithm. That's that's the process ear clipping. Um, you will be very hard pressed to find an ear clipping algorithm implemented in 3D anywhere else. This is probably gonna be the most easily accessible resource for 3D ear clipping that exists. Um, but that's that. So the question is why? Why do you wanna go ahead and do this? Well, a couple of different reasons why. Um, for our purposes today, well, we're obviously gonna be rendering things to the screen in our CAD software. So we want people to use OpenGL and OpenGL uses triangles um, for rendering. So I know also OpenGL can use like triangle strips and, and quadrilaterals and stuff, but I think under the hood it still uses triangles. So um, for that reason, we need to be able to deconstruct from any given polygon or any given geometry a bunch of faces that are triangles. And we don't want to have to do it all manually. I know in the previous video I went through and I did this all manually, it's not really worth the effort, to be honest. It just takes too long and, you know, I'm pretty good at it after doing it for all these years, but the average person would take a lot longer than me, so not worth it. Another reason why you want to use uh, tri triangulation is because obviously we want to we want to export things as files that can be used for printing or whatever, and those include STL files. STL files require um, triangles and face normals for the triangles, so we're going to need triangles anyway to export our files. So we might as well, you know, get a head start with triangulation now. Other reasons would be, you know, potentially you want something with a truss structure that touches certain points. This might be useful. Maybe you want to come up with a, um, a surface mesh for CFD or FDA. This is a good first pass. Um, there are better ways to mesh faces. We'll talk about them in a future video. Um, but this might be a good first pass. Or for some very simple analysis, this might be good enough. So the question is now how. I mentioned it was called an ear clipping algorithm. That's what it is. And the process is pretty simple. I'll just go through it really quick. So here are some, some pretty simple polygons. In 2D, we're gonna actually code it in 3D, but it's not too dissimilar. So the process, I'll just go, quick, really, go through it really quickly. This is what the computer will do after we're done programming. It will cut this polygon into three pieces. Now, for a human being like you know you and me, this is extremely simple. Like <laughs> A three-year-old could do this. This is not challenging at all. For a computer, it's, you know, little bit more challenging not too hard but you know definitely not trivial so what's the process well the process is starting at you know here uh, vertex zero taking the next two vertices to make a triangle the question is is this interior angle this is the first question is this angle uh, convex is it inward to the shape versus this angle here at vertex three this is an outward angle so for again for humans this is very simple we can say oh yeah you know this is an inward angle but again, in, in, in 3D, for a computer, this is not going to be a trivial uh, solution. We'll need to have, you know, a face normal. We'll need to have stuff like that to compute whether or not this angle is actually interior, you know, and, and less than 180 or whatever. So that's that's that. Next step is to make sure, are there any points inside this triangle 0, 1, 2? Say there was a point 0.7 in here, you know, this would no longer be a valid ear to clip off. So if those two things are satisfied, if there's no points inside and it's an interior angle, you can now cut off, entirely cut off vertex one from the shape and save triangle zero, one, two somewhere else. So you have this triangle zero, one, two saved, but you've now removed vertex one from the triangle. 
Next step is repeat that process. So now two, three, four. Again, this is an interior convex angle. And there's no point inside, so now you can save two, three, four. If I can draw properly. I'm, I'm very bad at drawing. You probably know that by now. Two, three, four. You can cut off vertex three. And now you have um, two triangles that have been saved from the, the body. And now you only have three points left. Those will always be able to be reduced to a triangle. So you have zero, two, four. Just like that, you've, you've cut off uh, three triangles from this pentagon. Again, n minus two. Now this shape here is a little bit more challenging, um, but a similar process can be applied. So again, this first vertex is the same as before, but this second vertex here is an exterior angle. It's concave, it's a cavity on the polygon. It's not possible for this to be a, you know, convex and to have the same algorithm applied to it, it won't work. So we have to skip over this. So we'll skip over, you know, vertex two as being the first point, we'll go to vertex three. So now three, four, five, that's an ear, no points inside. Um, five, six, zero, that's an ear, right? Then you got, what's it, zero, two, and three, that's gonna be an ear. And then zero, three, and five, that will be all that's left. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That makes this a, what, a heptagon or whatever, septagon? So yeah, that, that makes sense. So the question is, I mean, if there's, there's gonna be math to figure out um, the angle, if it's an interior angle or a uh, convex angle or not, it's not too hard. The really hard operation to do, especially in 3D, in my opinion, is computing whether or not points are inside the triangle. Because if we had a point, you know, here, like I said, point seven, that would not let this algorithm work. We'd have to skip this this um, this triangle as being an ear. So we'd have to be able to check, you know, is point two in the triangle, point three in the triangle, point four in the triangle, five, six. Seven. Seven is, so we have to skip. So we have to have some algorithm to compute whether or not a given point in the polygon is inside this triangle for the algorithm to work. So to do that, uh, let's say you have, let's, let's draw a simple, let's do like two points. This is triangle ABC. Let's say you have point PO for outside and you have uh, PI for inside. And if any points are, you know, pi, this point, this, this vertex 0, 1, 2 has to be skipped. So you don't want to have any pi's, only po's. So what's the process for this? Well, we'll have to compute some vectors, b, c, a, b, and c, a, like this. And we're going to note a number of everything clockwise. Um, just know that if it was counterclockwise, everything would be, you know, inverted from this. And we'll have normal information at this point. We'll have a, a face normal. That we'll compute. We'll actually have to encode that into our um, to our structure for faces. And at this point, now that you have vector AB, hold on. Let me draw this neatly because I'm going to feel bad ten years from now watching this video if I don't type everything, even though I can't type. So then the question is, um, if you take the cross product of the, of all these side vectors and the face normal, you will have um, you know, things like this. That those will be inward normals for our clockwise sequence of vertices, inward normals, and we'll call those, hold on, <laughs> I'm making a mess. <laughs> I'm making a mess. N2, N1, and N3. Oh my God, this is even worse. I should have done it by hand. And so the, the idea is, basically, if at the same time you take a, a vector from every one of these vertices on the triangle and the given point. And not just these points, but, but all points on the on the triangle. All you know, B, C. The the question basically is if I can let's type it up. Um, uh, basically at, if you evaluate six star products um, and you compute if they're all the same sign or not. So is, is N1 dot um, AP, you can compute N1 dot BP, you compute N2 dot BP, N2 dot CP, 
and then n3.cp and n3.ap. If, if all these things evaluate to the same sign, as in they're all going to be either greater than zero or less than zero, all six, then you know that the point is inside the triangle. If any of these, you know, any combination of these is the is different signs, what do I do? What do I say less than one? Which is less than zero. <laughs> if if any of them are different signs, you know it's outside the outside the triangle, which is what you want. Um, this is probably not the most efficient algorithm, but it's my algorithm, so we're gonna use it. <laughs> so it, it, it does seem to work, at least in my um, my musings. So that's the process. Again, it's not complicated. It's a little bit hard to grasp the geometry of this, but once you understand you know, these being the expressions to evaluate, it's not challenging at all. So I will say um, that I went ahead and I already encoded the normal face. So we did normal faces for all our polygons. I already encoded that into our um, Uh, into our uh, structure here for faces. I added a normal float of size three, that being our face normal. So every face that we'll ever put in our software will have also encoded in it a normal. And additional, I had to change a couple things. I added a, to our make face function, I added the, the float normal. And I also added the um, normals to our constructor, or whatever you call it, for our make rectangular prism function. So now, whenever we uh, execute our code, you know, like we had before, it'll automatically encode for our rectangular prism body face normals, which is, you know, a big whoop. So now the, the big question is, what's next? So what is next is the trigonometry. The trigonometry is probably the biggest thing. Um, we don't have very many functions here. All we have is a get normal and normalize a vector function. That's not enough trig to do anything you know, good. We need a dot product, we need a cross product, we need a function to compute the angles here, interior angles. So we'll code those all up um, right now. So let's, let's do them here, and then we'll talk about um, how, they, how they work. So we'll need, like I said, we'll need a dot product. So dot product returns a float. So we'll say float and dot. Um, and we'll take the inputs uh, x and y. Or I guess we'll call them b1 and b2. Now we'll call them x and y screwed. Who cares? Float x, float y. And dot product is very simple. You're just returning you know, x0 times y0 plus x1 times y1. You can tell I have like two words per minute as my type speed. Uh, x2 times y2. It's a dot product, very, very complicated. We'll also need a cross product. That we can't return, that's gonna be a, a vector. So we'll say uh, void cross, we'll pass in again, float x, float y. And we'll need an out, so we'll say float out. That's gonna be a, a pointer. And so what is all this? Oh my God. I, so bad at typing. So we'll say uh, out zero equals, how's the cross product work again? It goes uh, x1, no, yeah, x1, y2 minus x2, well, is that right? I think so. And then uh, we'll have y and z components as well. So out one, out two. The y component is is two zero zero two, and the z component is what zero one. Looking at the the pattern here, zero one one zero. Yeah, that's probably it. If if it's wrong, we'll find out. I guess after hours of debugging. Um, we'll also need a. Oh, I know what we need. We need a way to get um, between the nodes. So hold on, let me show you. So we need to be able to compute vector a, b, given a and b, basically. You know? So to do that, we need a function here. We'll call this function um, 
vector between nodes. We have to pass in a head and a tail, probably the tail first, because usually you call vectors by the tail first. So they struct node, node one, or oh, hold on, we'll call this one tail. Let's be simple about this. Struct node uh, head, and then what's it? Let's float out, another out. Oops. So for the vector between nodes, all we have to do is um, compute basically head minus tail for three components. So we'll say out zero equals head x minus tail x. Oops, did that. We have the same thing for y and z. We have head y, head z, tail y, tail z. That should give us a vector between nodes. And then lastly, it's gonna be the angle. To compute the angle of, of, a, of a given, you know, to compute, for example, angle zero, one, two, uh, about the normal of this face. Oops. Oh, crap, hold on. Stupid Vim, I hate Vim. Anyway, <laughs> so basically to compute the angle, we'll have a normal for these um, faces here. It'll all be the same normal as the original face. And we'll have to compute the angle about that normal for all these vertices. So we'll be we'll compute a vector like 0, 1, 1, 2, and we'll compute the angle um, between those two about vector normal. So that's that's the process of what we're gonna do. It's very simple. I mean what the heck? Oh my god. Stupid, dude. Stupid swap files, dude. I hate them so much. What's the way to turn that off, dude? It's crap. Anyway, so the process here. We need a function that returns the uh, the angle, so we'll get get angle function. This will be I don't know, angle between points in three D space. So get angle. We have to pass in um, a bunch of nodes. So struct node node one, struct node node two, and struct node node three. And we'll need an out, I guess. Or I guess an angle or something. I don't know. It's some kind of. Now nah, I was going to pass it as a as the float, so we don't care about anything else. Well, oh no, we do the normal, obviously. So we'll say um, we'll say like float normal three, something like that. That should work. Get angle. So what do we need? We'll need um vector v1 and v3, meaning the vector from uh, vertex. So for example, let's say, you know, you're at this, you know, z one, two, three. This is so bad, two, three. We want the vector two, one, and the vector two, three. We got the angle between those about n. So V1, equals, and actually we can use our previous function vector between nodes. So we'll say vector between nodes, that wasn't, wasn't on, the, on the books, between nodes and it's tail to head. So we'll need node two, I think node two, node one. Now we'll need to make a cross product. So we'll say cross product three cross, what is it? V1, V3 cross products. Oh, you know what we should do first though? This may not may not matter, but we, need, we should normalize our vectors. We have a function for that. Yeah, normalize vectors. So we might as well just do that really quick. Normalize the vector V1 and then V3. Now, basically the process for this is the determinant. You can look this up. I'm not gonna waste too much time explaining why this is, but we'll, we'll uh, create a determinant uh, using a cross product. So we'll say float determinant equals 
this is, we'll just do the x, y, and the z. So we're basically dot producting uh, the, um, we're taking the determinant of v1 and v3 normalized about the vector n. So cp dot normal zero plus cp one normal one plus cp two times normal two. That's the dot determinants and then the angle, I think this is right, is going to be, and we'll turn the angle, the, the, the angle is going to be the arctangent two, so we're gonna take the, the, the two component version of this, of the determinant and the dot products of uh, V1, V3. That should give us the angle. So at, at this point, we have all the trigonometric functions we need. I'm gonna go ahead and put these all in our in our trig.h. I'll be right back. Okay, I put that in, no big deal. Now we have to do something in geometry. So we need to do a couple things. We need to be able to um, remove a node from a face. So the you know basically the, the idea is to be able to remove like node one after we've cut it off as an ear. That's, that's the first thing we have to do. And then we have to be able to um, replace a face from a body. So you know, write these two functions first. Um, I don't wanna waste too much time. I'm gonna clip this up myself and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, I put together these two functions, remove node from face and replace face from body. Um, they do what it says on the tin. Um, you can look through and see what it does. Basically it just looks through the the structure and replaces things that need to be replaced or removed. At this point, we have to be able to do the actual function, which is triangulating the faces. So we'll make a triangulate face function. We have to pass in, I think the we'll pass in the body, that might be important. And we'll pass in the actual face on the body. Um, oh yeah, we need the body because we have to be able to up, put the new faces on there. And obviously the the old face to figure out which face you want to, you know, actually triangulate. Oops. So how's this going to work? Well, we will need a, a target face to be like saved. So we need a structure for that. Um, how does this work? Say it's but it will be size int three. Yeah, we'll do three. Sure, good enough. Oh, you know what? Oh, I forgot something, I'll be right back. So dumb, I forgot to put the stupid float inside the face structure, malloc above my B. So we'll need, um, yeah. So what's the process for this? I'm just gonna outline it in the code and then I'll put it myself we're running out of time. So the process is we'll need uh, a counter for the, um, the node that we're currently on in our list. So zero, one, two, three, four, whatever. And we're gonna have a, a loop. So we're gonna say while, and we'll, do, we'll repeat this process of clipping off ears until the number of nodes, of nodes is, or while it is greater than three. So once it goes three or below, as in we have a triangle, so it should be three ideally, um, we'll, we'll break out of this loop. So we'll repeat that. And then the question is what do we do? So we obviously have nodes zero, one, and two. So we'll, I'm just gonna code this up quickly. So node, oops. Um, uh, struct node, we'll just say a equals face node array, and it will be at the ith location, but not just i, we have to actually wrap it around, because 
you can imagine we go around this triangle multiple or this polygon multiple times. So we have to be able to um, do a modulo by the number of nodes that there are. So we'll say I modulo um, face none nodes. And we'll need that for node B and C. So A, B, and C being you know zero, one, and two in that picture on the right. And instead of being I, it'll be I plus one, and then I plus two. So we have node A, B, and C. What else do we need? We need to get the angle. So it's the float angle, and this comes from our other, our other you know, uh, function that we just made. So get angle, I think it was called. And we passed in, what we passed in, I guess, A, B, C, and then the base normal. So then it comes to the point is, if this angle here, is it greater than zero or not? If it's greater than zero, that means it's a it's convex. We can keep going with the algorithm. If not, we have to skip ahead. So we'll say if angle greater than zero, and then we want to go ahead and start counting the um, the number of points outside. So ideally, we want all points that are not in this triangle but are in the polygon to be outside the given triangle. So for example, for the pentagon, we have a total of five vertices and there are three in the triangle. So we want a total of two points to be outside the triangle. So we're gonna evaluate these two points, increment by one each time when they're outside. And if that number is, you know, equals to, you know, if that number plus three equals the number of points in the polygon, we're good to go and cutting off the year. So we'll say int num nodes outside. Set that, set that to zero. And now we'll loop through the actual points. So we'll say for int j, equals zero, j less than the um, base num nodes, uh, j plus plus. So we're now looping through all the points outside the, the triangle. And I guess now we'll just skip over points that are in the triangle. We'll say if um, j is less than i, so if we're before, yeah, if we're before or after the, the points in the triangle, so you say, if j less than i or j is greater than what i plus two, yeah. If that, then we can continue on. So we don't want to evaluate that if, if points a, b, and c are in the triangle, just if points you know d, e, and f. So to do that, what do we do? We have to, to define point p. I remember down here we had a um, a point p. So we'll say struct. Um, node star p equals, and we'll just take the face um, node array value for that given point, and we will be at point j, because we're looping around through j. And now we have to have um, all these vectors defined, a, b, b, c, uh, c, a. So we'll say uh, float a, b, 3, uh, b, c, 3, C A three. We'll also need um, the, the vectors from A P, B P, and C P. Again, all size three. This is for our evaluation here. We're going to try to evaluate this. Ah, uh, jeez. I'm not having a good day with typing. And then uh, float N one, N two, and N three. Three, and what else do we need? We need to, oh to be able to compute uh, actual values for this. So I'm going to call this S. I don't know, I don't know why. S one, S two, S three, S four, S five, S six. And now we get to the actual um, use of our trig functions. So I'm just going to basically create all these vectors that we just defined. So uh, vector between nodes. What we got a b is a b how many we make we make six i think yeah a b yep b c c a yep and a p b p and c p and um now we have to take the cross products. Now we're to get these n1, n2, and n3. So we'll say cross uh, 
uh, a b and the face normal equals n1 and then cross b c in the face normal and c a in the face normal are n2 and n3 respectively and now <laughs> this is so tedious s1 equals the dot product of uh, a p and n1 S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. We got uh, we'll say AP, BP, BP, CP, CP, AP, and one, and two, and then three. And then lastly, oh my God, this is such a tease. If, now we're checking if they're all the same sign. So we'll say if, this is such inefficient uh, programming, uh, S1, is greater than zero, and S2 is greater than zero. And I'll be right back after this. Okay, so basically the plan is, if all the signs are the same, so they're all greater than zero or less than zero, um, we're in the triangle, that's not good. So you wanna break out of the loop. The thing is, we'd only have to have one, um, one of these two options, don't have to have an or. The problem is I wanna make this code um, robust that if you have the counterclockwise node sequence, it will also work. So we have both, both options here. Now, if we're in the tri if we're outside the triangle, we increment the number of points, and then we check if we have gone through all the points. That is, if we have counted all the points that are not in the triangle, we want to now remove node B, and then loop through all the the faces that have already been gone through and have three nodes, and then add our our new face in there with the make face, you know, with the no, and everything. So that's the plan there, and then once we go through all those. And we break out of this uh, this particular project, or this particular uh, iteration. We increment i plus plus, and then wrap around again with this modulo. The process now is now that we've um, we've got rid of the you know the face we don't need. Um, we remove the node at least. Now the process is well, we have to actually remove those. Um, We have to take the last three nodes and make it into a triangle, basically. That, that's the plan here. So we have, if we have three three nodes left, what we do is we, we do a struct node. Uh, a equals face node array zero. B and C. Again, this is pretty straightforward. I don't really have to go through this but I will. We're going to remove these actual nodes, A, B, and C, with remove node from face, our old function. We're removing node from face, we're removing node A, B, and C. So now the, the face that we used to have no longer has nodes A, B, and C, but we have to make a new face. So um, I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've got um, Basically, I, I removed the nodes from that original face, and I've put the three nodes, A, B, and C, the last three nodes in our, in our, in our structure, into a new face, and put that, and replaced the face that we used to have with the new face in the body. Um, what I want to do now, that function is pretty much done. The function I want to do now is basically to just loop that over every single um, face in a body. So triangulate, triangulate body, and then just pass in a, 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 a body and just loop through that function on literally everything in the entire body. That means we can be able to use this, we can use this for you know, anything that we've, we, we make. So I'm gonna clip this up, I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so I put in this function here, triangulate body. It goes, basically it loops through all the faces in the body and triangulates them, not too hard. And then I also quickly programmed this, which is a make polygon face. This basically just literally makes a single face of a polygon, it's not, unlike our old function, which is make a uh, rectangular prism. This one just makes a single face, just to give us another test case for when we um, see if our code actually works. Then I also went and I uh, changed this uh, geometry uh, .h file to include all our new, new changes. And at this point, I'm gonna go back into our, our main function and code up some, uh, some test cases. So that's what we're gonna do now. We don't need any of this stuff anymore. Let's get rid of that. 
So let, let's let's keep this print body el elements. Oh, you know what? I have an I have an idea. Hold on for print body elements. Where is that? So I'm gonna actually add one more thing here. I'm gonna add the normal. So print f just so we can see it. Normal equal uh, slash n. What is it? Percent f percent f percent f. Just really quick, I want to be able to just check that just to make sure that's going to be um, iter normal zero, iter normal one, and iter normal two. And then I'm also going to, I'm going to print some new lines here, or like I'm going to print. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna print some new lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just so we can keep track of what's going on here. Yeah, that should that should work. Iter normal one, two, three. Yeah, iter is a face, right? Yeah. Yeah, that should work. So now that will print the body elements before we have done anything. This is after we make the prism, before we do anything else to our, to our structure. I want to um, type in triangulate body uh, prism. That should you know automatically go through and triangulate every single face. We just coded that up. And then I want to, again, um, print body elements. Then after that, I'm going to get rid of this garbage. Who needs this? We're going to create a new face. Let's just do this really fast. Um, struct body. We'll call it a I don't know, hexagon. Let's do a hexagon. Equals uh, struct body. normal so float normal three equals let's just do very simple uh, z you know it's a it's x y plane polygon this is a second second test case after this one i just want to have two test cases here one being a full prism and one being just a single face because our prism doesn't have any fancy stuff like we did all this fancy coding to handle like uh, concave vertices and stuff i want to make a hexagon that has a, a concave vertex so let's just Quickly code this up. I'll do that and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, so I encoded this little hexagon here: zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we have at least one vertex that it's you know outside you know that it's it's an outside you know concave vertex, and I coded up those points here. So this is obviously not going to compile. I know for a fact it's not going to compile. I just I just tried it. So <laughs> I'm going to be right back and I'm going to try and uh, and fix these problems. I'll be right back. Okay. So yeah, that worked. Honestly, what I forgot was stupid. Uh, I, I forgot to do all these includes. <laughs> They're missing in some, I'm not sure how that happened. They're missing in some of these uh, dot C's. That's fine. Uh, Matt and I forgot a semicolon uh, and I messed up something in the, the print. Yeah, I, I, I actually deleted this by accident and messed up a semicolon somewhere. That's you know, not, not too bad. Pretty good actually for you know all that coding, only a few errors. Um, but yeah, so let's just see how that looks. That's everything, right? Yeah, so make run. So in our first first polygon or first uh, body, we had a rectangular prism with these side lengths four, five, and three. With it had six faces, so you have you know zero through five. When we ran it through our triangulation function, you'll see that we had six faces with node four, with node zero through three, which is four nodes per face. After we ran it through, you'll see that we have the first face broken into faces zero and one, second face broken into faces two and three, and this actually seemed to have worked just fine. Third face faces one. So now we have a faces zero through eleven, and they're all three nodes faces. So that seems to have worked just fine. Then 
our second um, polygon, which you can see over here, it's like this, just a very simple like looking hexagon type thing. Um, actually, let me show. This is actually important to show. So um, basically, it used to have uh, six nodes, zero through five. Now it has four faces, not one face, but four faces with three nodes each. So the first face, let's actually draw this out so we can see what it did. The, uh, the first face was, you can see, node is negative one, negative two. That's this point, node zero. Node one is negative three, two. That's this point here. And node two, two is two, three. So it made this triangle first. That's the first triangle. So it cut off node one. Then face, one, face, uh, face number one here is uh, node zero is two, one. That's this point. So obviously it obviously skipped this triangle here. It didn't do triangle two, three, four, so it skipped that. So it did two, one, zero, five, one, zero, three, negative two, zero. So this, it made this triangle next. So this was triangle one, this is triangle two. Face number two was negative one, negative two, zero. That's this point. Two, three, zero, that's this point, right? And then two, one, zero, that's this point. So it made this triangle number three. And then lastly, it had this triangle made of one, two, zero, two, one, zero, three, negative two, zero. So this triangle was last. So one, two, three, four. So it turned a hexagon into four triangles. Again, that is n minus two. So at the end of the day, we have a set of functions, which not only has more trigonometric capability for us going forward, but also we have the ability to triangulate any given, you know, polyhedron, you know, with a simple face into a body with only triangles. In the next video, this took a very long time, in the next video we will be actually using our new structures to plot our fancy new triangulated polyhedron to the screen as well as exporting them out as STL files and, uh, and so forth. So keep in tune for that one, that'll be out in a few days. Thanks.